Electronic muscle stimulation and intermittent fasting. Do they have benefits or are they just fads? Watch this. Our first caller is Colin from Washington. Hey, what's up, Colin? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, good. Uh, so uh, I had a few questions, but uh, my first one is, uh, is EMS electro muscle stimulation training safe and effective? Okay. So first off, why are you asking this question? Do you, are you using this to rehab an injury or build muscle? Yeah. yeah like what's, what's the context you here? see a cool ad? Uh, no. So I was actually, I just saw the new Spider-Man movie and I, uh, afterwards looked up what Tom, Tom Holland had done to prepare for the movie. And it looked like part of his regimen was, was doing that EMS training where you, you know, you hook up to one of those systems yeah. and, and hold a pose. And I was just kind of wondering about it. I had only, you know, heard of people doing it, but I've never save, done it. Save your money, bro. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, so money. there's a lot of stuff I'm sure he did to get ready for the role. It's probably one of the, that probably had the least impact on his uh, physique. So EMS has been around for a while. It's been studied for a long time. Um, I mean, I remember uh, reading articles about Bruce Lee using um, EMS devices. You could buy them, uh, you know, through c catalogs back in the day. And every, Five years or yeah. so, you'll see EMS cyclical. Yeah, like ab devices, like wear this ab belt, and it's like doing ten thousand crutches while you work at your desk and that kind of stuff. And you know, put this on your butt and it makes it grow. So EMS basically forces a muscle to contract by sending an electrical signal to the muscle. Here's what the studies show: the studies show that it does help prevent some amount of atrophy when you're injured and not moving the muscle. In other words, if you're if your leg's broken. And you can't do anything with the leg at all, so you can't contract the muscle at all, really. Then EMS may help prevent some level of, of atrophy, but not an entire level of atro atrophy. There's also, you know, it might help connect to muscles that maybe you've lost some connection to, but that's more of a kind of a medical issue. Now, as far as like advanced training and building muscle, um, no, you're you're gonna you know isometrics will do that. For you, um, in fact, you know, generating kind of intrinsic force mm -hmm. is going to be way more effective than kind of this external source of force. I know the the selling point, right? The selling point is you know use this yeah. device that's when gonna, you're passive, right? So there's a passive way yeah. to stimulate the muscle, which then you know they're they're attributing to muscle growth, which it's really not moving you forward as much as preserving uh, muscle loss from occurring like for you know it, again for rehab purposes but like trying to sell it as a performance device is kind of ridiculous yeah even even in the atrophy aspect it really has a small effect i was gonna it's say better, even, better than nothing e yeah even that it's still splitting yeah hairs. even then i mean i i would use it like so if i broke like you said if i broke my leg uh, these th these tools are relatively inexpensive, right? So if I knew I couldn't be on my leg for maybe three months or whatever the time it would be to heal, I would hook it up to my quads. You know, yeah. why not? I'm sitting there watching TV anyways, and it's like if it's going to slow down atrophy a little bit, so it's a, yeah. a little less. But I mean, I wouldn't expect my quads to stay the same or build by any <laughs> means. And so, you know, I see some people pitch it too as recovery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, it, you know, you got sore the day, let's say you train. I guess like, if you compare it to like sitting, uh, laying on the couch and doing nothing. Right. Then maybe there's some benefit. So I think that's good to tell Colin, right? So like, that, and that's where, and by the way, after after we do do this, I, I was going to go on a rant anyways on, because I always, whenever I trash something like this, I always get somebody who's like attached to it that yeah. wants to defend it. I said, listen, I can sell this shit too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I could take, I could take the information around it and still sell it to yeah. people. I just, when we talk to people, we're trying to help people with like real good advice. Here's the thing. If it's like where Sal was just going, if I'm sedentary, I'm doing nothing. And I just trained the day before putting that on my, uh, putting that on my legs versus not doing anything at all. I can show markers of improvement, like recover, speeding up recovery. Yeah. Right. But I would take that and I would say, okay, you get to you get your guy who's hooked up to the EMS. I'm going to take that same guy and I'm going to take him through a 30 minute mobility session. Yeah, and I'll show you or better results with not even no, five minute trigger session. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, we'll just say, but I mean, I will blow those results away with a 30 minute mobility session yeah. uh, on that person. Then that guy is hooked up to a machine that cost him a couple hundred bucks to buy. So yeah. that's where we will shit on things like this. Is that it's like, well, there's a a free way to get better results than that thing will provide. Yeah, and and there's you know I know I see how some people are using them now too. Where they'll get these really strong ones, and they'll attach it to a muscle. <laughs> I see people like, doing it like work out now. Yeah, they'll put it on your lats while you do like a lat pull down, and it just it creates this intense muscle contraction. 
Mm. Uh, like an intensity amplifier, but there's so many non, you know, external ways to do that. That and I have yet to see anything that really shows that it's got tremendous value. It's also not very pragmatic. Um, you know, hook yourself up to a big machine while you work out. Right. Um, so I, I don't see lots of uh, of applications. So I, I hope that helped you out, Colin. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate it. Uh, and then my other question was, uh, what are the benefits and drawbacks of intermittent fasting? And does eating in a small window affect the absorption of protein in your body? Yeah, may- maybe a little bit. Um, you know, some divided divided doses of protein within a reasonable amount, right? So maybe every four hours or so, you'll see in studies will show an increase in muscle protein synthesis. So it's probably a little bit better. I would say it's splitting hairs when you consider the context of, you know, what works better for the person and their lifestyle and all that other stuff. Um, As far as intermittent fasting is concerned, the benefits uh, really boil down to helping people develop a better relationship with food and however would, that's there's that's a double-edged sword i would challenge that for intermittent fasting i would say i would agree to that with fasting but intermittent fasting is turned into more of a fad and and yeah. you're and it's a window you're still eating so you could technically it could have an adverse effect for relationship with food instead of you totally. instead of you eating uh, throughout the day sporadically now you eat in this four to six hour window and now you binge because of that so it could promote bad relationship but what we do promote on the show and talk about is the benefits of doing like a day fast, right? Like fasting from food entirely for the day and not for the benefits of what everything it does for, you know, uh, regenerations of neurons and growth hormone production and blah, blah, blah. That There's a bunch of stuff that mark the real benefit is disciplining yourself to detach from food. To know that I can go 24 hours, my body is not going to starve. I'm not going to lose muscle. I'm not going to die. And go, wow, yeah. I don't. I didn't really need as much as I thought I needed. And and what what am I doing with my time now that I don't have to eat for those three meals in a day? We think there's tremendous value in a practice like that and incorporating yeah. it. In fact, if you go it's back, self reflection. Yeah, if you go back far enough on Mind Pump, maybe uh, three years ago or so, Sal went on a kick for a while. And I, I, I were, you remember this when yeah. you were promoting? your two to three day fast every month. Yeah. So I think that's extremely valuable, but he wasn't doing it to get more shredded or build more muscle or to get growth hormone production, all the things that is touted around uh, intermittent fasting, right? And that's not to say that those things aren't true. There are good health markers and benefits that are improved by incorporating fasting. I just think the way it's been promoted, or we think the way it's been promoted, I think it's it's used like a diet, and yeah. I, I, we don't use it that way with clients. Yeah, for, from a medical perspective, there's investigating fasting, like legit fasting for mm-hmm. potential cancer treatment, or at least in combination with, with chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of interesting, but you know, we're talking about with the food relationship thing, it totally can go in the opposite direction. If I'm dealing with someone whose battles with an eating disorder where they restrict themselves, fasting is the worst possible thing I could possibly do. I mean, in an extreme case, I could take an anorexic or a recovering anorexic, be like, yeah, we're not going to eat for two days. And like, what a terrible way to approach food relationship. Really, it works well with people who are afraid to be away from food. The, the person that feels like they need to feed themselves every two hours or afraid of being skinny and they overfeed themselves and stuff themselves, then a fast can can maybe be beneficial if they go into it in the right way. But- a lot of the health benefits, by the way, Colin, that come from fasting, cell autophagy and you know hormonal effects, anti-inflammatory effects, you see also from a restricted calorie diet. So it's not unique uh, specifically to fasting. Um, so it's definitely been turned into the new fad um, diet, <coughs> excuse me, if you will. But yeah, for the average person... Um, I, I would never promote fasting as a way for fat loss. The clients, or- the clients I used it most with were competitors. Were and w- what I found was when I coached competitors, so bikini, men's physique, bodybuilders, they had be- they had become um, so addicted to measuring and weighing and tracking their food and eating six times a day that they just they carried their Tupperware everywhere, religiously wouldn't miss any of that in fear of muscle loss or whatever, or not having enough fuel for the workout, like. Those clients, I saw, uh, I saw a, a poor relationship with food. Even though they thought they had a good relationship because they were fit and ripped, I saw them so attached to food that I would disrupt that by telling them, "Hey, next week we're going to go on a twenty-four hour fast." 
And I, I thought there, and then I would show them, look, you're not going to lose a bunch of muscle. You're going to be just fine. In fact, you're going to see these other health benefits, watch your mental clarity, watch these other things. And so I liked to use it to interrupt somebody who's attached to food. Um, other than that, uh, I think it's, it's, I think it's been, um, overly used or, 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 or prescribed to people. For, and by the way, the people that get most upset about this conversation are people that sell shit related to intermittent mm -hmm. fasting. Like whenever we go on this rant, yeah. which this YouTube yeah. channel for sure will get some bullshit. So there'll be somebody that will talk shit underneath in the comment section. And it's always some motherfucker that has made their living off of selling intermittent fasting to people. Colin, we lose you. Oh, you got me. Oh, uh, great. All right. All right. Well, so does that, does that right. answer your question? All right. Yeah, it did. I, I really appreciate it, guys. All right, man. Thanks awesome. for calling. Have a good one, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Yep. Yeah, God forbid. Could, could you see his face, Doug? Did we ruin his day right there? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> we just crushed him. He's like, fuck. Yeah. All the things. He, he's like, I just ordered this. Yeah, I just yeah, got my yeah, intermittent yeah. fasting well, I guess book. I'll send it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, God forbid there's a study that uh, shows any benefit at all to something to get to in a anything. diet. Leave and it to the fitness industry. We'll make boy, a we'll make a market out of it. They will turn it into something uh, completely different, um, and and market it and sell it and make people believe it's the next. Well, watch watch the comment section on this. Watch yeah. the YouTube it comment section on this. Exactly. Yeah. There will be somebody in you? here. It changed my life, or somebody who and, may, and maybe it did. Maybe yeah. you're that person that needed to to detach right, from right. food and learn how to deal with. Hunger cues and cravings, or actually. May, or well, maybe it just worked incredibly well with your schedule. Maybe you had bad habits first thing in the morning. Maybe you were a four donut, you know, right. Starbucks, 900 calorie drinker. Yeah. And because you yeah. no longer can eat in that. Now, window, you know, you, you you don't need that many calories, right? right? For one thing. Right. Like, it's like, oh, wow. It, it just brought a lot of awareness uh, to your to your daily habits. And it was like very beneficial in that sense. So there's a lot of benefits to it, but it's not like the end all be all. And, no, and, it, it, intermittent fasting really should be viewed more as a spiritual practice. It really should. I think it's, so that's too. how it was. That's how it's existed. It's been, an, it's in every major religion precisely for that reason. Yeah. Then the intent is right. Yeah. By the way, it's no different. The only difference is we're dealing with food, but it, you, the spiritual practice would be like if you fasted from electronics for a few days or fasted from, right. you know, maybe from the city, you went camping. How many times people go camping disconnect, come back like, oh my God, I feel so rejuvenated. I feel so right. <clears throat> centered. So that's the way I think it should be viewed. It should not be viewed like a diet. If it's viewed like a diet, <clears throat> you're only, uh, really you're using it wrong, uh, in my opinion. Well, and the EMS thing is just like that, right? They took a little bit of science and positive benefits that are surrounding it and built it into this yeah. whole thing. It's just, and that's what it's, this is another one. Like I see a lot of it right now. It's really popular in the, the it's making its way big time into the men's physique and bodybuilding world. Cause I still am connected to a bunch of those people. And now they're like doing it while they work out. Like they've hooked them up <laughs> to these machines and it's just like, it's that same pattern, right? Like they were doing with rubber bands attaching to yes, all the machines yes. on top of already having the yeah, load. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Let 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 some study come out to show the what the you manipulate the strength curve with using the bands on a hammer strength. Now every fucking yeah. guy is doing it inside the gym like it's the next best thing. So yeah. I feel the same way about this. If I had a product that was connected to this, absolutely, you could hear me sell it. I could sell it to you <laughs> yeah. for three different ways it's easily. Also how how like um, we always have to look at new techniques and, and are they pragmatic? Like, yeah, okay, there's this new EMS machine, super powerful, and we're watching bodybuilders and strength athletes be hooked up to it in a gym. There's this computer and wires and pads hooked to their back, and then they do it like, who's going to do that? Right. right, and is that even is that the same machine that you order online that you right. get sent to your house? It's not. So, well, it also how long would you be applying that? Yeah, like, how well, long is it going to last? And also the unintended consequences. Like, I feel like one of the things that we're in the middle of um, right now with technology is we're trying to promote people being more active and walking more, not trying to find more hacks on how they don't have to move and still be able yeah. to get the benefits. Lazier ways to to promote work. Right. Like, so come on. even if it did have some pretty good benefits from it, I'd be I'd still be cautious with promoting it because I know that's one of the biggest problems is we just don't move enough. No. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather teach my client, hey, listen, not only will I give you more benefits by having you go do this flow session of mobility work or yoga practice, you'll get the same, you know, uh, you know, muscle atrophy or the, the not atrophying benefits that you would get from this machine. Plus you're now moving. So we're burning some calories, right? And we're promoting other health benefits. I would, I, I'm thinking of that also. So it's not just, 
hey, what does this help work or not work? Or is it practical or not practical? But it's also like, man, what, right now we're in this like people don't move anymore and we're heading in this direction where we talk about all the time, the Wally look, you know, yep. before you know it, we're not going to be moving around at all. And this is just another tool. Oh, hey, guess what? You don't got to yeah. move. You know what it reminds Sit me of? Sit still and build muscle. You know what it reminds me of? Remember Total Recall? We're like, you know, if you can't afford a vacation, how about if we yeah. just give you the memories of a vacation? Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. Oh, that's cool. I'll just remember that I went that's somewhere. easier. That I did it. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.